This is the quick assembly guide for my jet engine desk fan. I'm going to try and show you all of the main parts and how they fit together. I haven't had all of the parts fully assembled on screen because it takes quite a while and I'm also going to zip through some of the parts in order to show you in normal speed the most important bits or things that you have to note. This is the main motor assembly, so this is the rotor with the attached to the rotor and the motor is balanced as well as we can. There's a stand for doing that. You can see here this is the bearing. The bearing is um, used to support the other end of the rotor and the balancing plate you can see there has already been pre-adjusted. That, if your printer is very precise, may not necessarily be needed. Likewise, you can see the little balancing grub screws that are in there as well. This is the lower nozzle assembly, which is where the motor fastens. And you can see that there's four holes there, which is where the motor mount screws go next to all of the cooling holes that allow the cooling air to come out. These are the core sections. There are two. There's one which has the channel for the motor wires and the other one fits opposite. That's also where you can see some of the cooling inlet holes. If we bring the motor together, you'll also see there's a little dot, a marker, and there's another one on one of the other sides. That pretty much lines up with the motor channel on the bottom of the fan. So bringing everything together, We then have to make the alignment to get the screws set up according to the holes. All of the holes uh, in the plastic parts are initially reamed out to two and a half millimeters and then tapped for M3 bolts. The whole thing is designed effectively to be held together by M3 bolts, apart from many of the motor bolts, which are a little bit smaller. So here you can see the other half fitting together. We're going to take that and then put the other screws in to hold that in place. We can then check to make sure that the rotor still spins freely. This is the inlet assembly. Uh, this is where the rotor is surrounded and you can see that this is the inlet uh, center support. We fit them together and again we have to check for the alignment dots. So get that lined up with the screw hole and everything can get fastened in place. Screw length isn't particularly important for most of these. It's basically long enough to actually allow them all to fit together. There isn't anything particularly critical there. And again, we can check that the rotor spill still spins freely and that we haven't caused anything to bind. So the inlet, the core assembly there, um, has a hole for the bearing to fix. And you may find you don't need all of the screws to hold it together. The cover there basically just fits over the top. All of these holes are pre-tapped. You have to align the bearing hole with the center hole on the core section there, the core assembly, and it may click together. So fastening this in, it's important to make sure that the screws go in far enough so that the um, cover isn't um, blocked. And again, it's worth just checking to make sure that the motor, the rotor still spins freely. That's the main assembly complete. These are the holes which we're going to use to fasten the suspension to hold the rotor in approximately that position. This is the main nozzle, um, which has its nozzle lip already pre-installed. Um, basically, they just fit together. And you can see the three mounting holes that will fit it onto the main body of the fan. 
I took quite a few wrong turns with this. This is the curse of attempting to do things from the camera. So this section is sped up quite significantly. Um, once you find the appropriate angle, it's relatively easy to do stuff, but um, it's a lot harder to do it in a way where you can see what's going on than it is to just do it. At this point, the main job is to loosen off all of the holders there. But let's skip lots of me fiddling with elastic. Um, the elastic is fairly important because it's what allows the fan not to transmit large amounts of vibration through to a desk or whatever you stand it. And this is the fan fully complete. You can see it suspended um, on the elastic. We have to connect the motor. It's worth noting that this is a slightly different version of some of the parts and the ones that you'll see on the um, on the uploads. Um, this is partly because I'm actually using slightly different electronics to the ones I've uploaded. I'm not convinced it's better, so I haven't yet uploaded everything. And with it all fastened, we can have the motor running. I've set this speed to be about as low as it's possible for it to get. The fan is not incredibly quiet. It whines. It um, does make a noticeable vibration. It isn't horrible on the lowest speed, but as you can hear, it gets noticeably noisier on the higher speeds. Um, at the high speed, it's really very loud and it's not particularly feasible. The airflow is very concentrated, so you can have it a long way away from you, but the low speed is the only one I've ever used it uh, for an extended period. Although, as you can see, it works.